In this video, we will look at programming a microcontroller from Atmel Studio and debugging your program. In my previous video, we wrote a program to turn on an LED when a button is pressed as well as send some messages over UART. This is the program we will look at. First of all, this right here is the tool that we're actually going to use to debug our application. This is the Atmel ICE debugger and it has these connections right here which I've connected to my board and they go to the programming interface of this board which I'm using SWD as the programming interface and so my microcontroller here has pins which we use for programming and the connections can be seen right here and you can see that it tells you which pins have to be connected in order to be able to program this and these correspond to the headers on the Atmel ICE programmer. So once I've connected those I'm able to actually interact with and program my microcontroller. On my board the actual microcontroller is right here and everything else is just a breakout for it so that I can actually use it. We have these headers that I can plug other wires into and connect them together on this breadboard that I have right here and this is for our application our LED and the button which I programmed before and so as we said in the, in the previous video when I press it a light turns on holds for half a second and also sends some messages over UART which cannot be seen here. So let's take a look at actually debugging our program. In the Atmel Studio environment here's where we left off last time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint in the first line of execution here by clicking on the gray area over here and a red dot is going to appear indicating that now I have a breakpoint here and the line also gets highlighted in red. This means that the program is going to stop its execution at that point and let me do things a little more manually. So in order to actually program I would click on this start debugging button right here However, I currently do not have any debugging tool selected as indicated over here. It says no tool. It says the board I have, but no tool. So what I'll do first is I'll go to project and I'll go to its properties and I will select a tool, the Atmel ICE, and the interface, like I said, is the SWD interface. And so that's set. One more thing that I like to do when I'm debugging is actually go to the tool chain, go to optimization, and turn off optimization, make none. And that is going to help us with seeing the values of all variables and not skipping over parts of the program that would otherwise be optimized out. So now we're ready to program and I hit this debugging button. The program compiles and starts its execution. So here we see that this arrow here indicates that we've stopped at this line and it's highlighted in yellow and I can step through this program line by line by hitting this step over button. And so I hit step over and you can see it executed that line and it has not yet executed line 7, board in it. I click it again and it executes that. And I can keep going line by line and seeing what's going to happen. So we can see that it's checking if the button level is high then it's going to turn the LED on but it's not. It's, it's low right now the way I've wired it up and therefore we go to the else statement which is just to set the LED to low. And I can keep on doing this and keep on going through. Now I would have to hold the button down at this point in order for it to register the button level is high in order for it to go in here but instead what I can do is I can put another breakpoint inside of this if statement right here and then I'll hit continue which will just run the program and now notice nothing is highlighted because the program is running but it's not stopping anywhere because there are no breakpoints it can access however when I hit the button now this condition was true and therefore it went inside of this if statement notice the LED is not yet lit up because it has not executed the statement to light it up so I hit step over and now it lights up and so now it's going to try to send the messages and suppose that I want to know what's actually happening inside of this send messages function if I just hit step over it's going to execute it and just keep on going instead I want to step into it so I will hit this button right here step into and it goes into here 
and it goes to this line right here. So it's going to start executing these line by line. Again, I can hit step over and it's going to execute that and then a 100 millisecond delay and then this one. But suppose I want to go even further. Suppose I want to see what this is actually doing. I hit step into again. And now we see that, in fact, this usart write line function just keeps on putting in one character at a time onto the usart until there are no more characters left. And suppose that I actually want to know even more what's happening. I step into this function. And now I'm really at the lowest possible level. We're at the register level here. You can see that this is checking these registers, checking until this is ready to be transmitted, and then it sets another register to actually transmit the character, and then it returns out of that. And now suppose that I want to exit out of the function that I've just stepped into, because now it's going to keep on transmitting these until there are no more characters left. I can use step out, and it's going to go back to where it came from. And I can hit step out again, and it goes back to over here after having completed the rest of the commands in the function that I would have otherwise stepped over. So this is how I can delve into functions and see exactly what's going on. And again, I can keep on going line by line, step over, and I keep going. Notice the LED is still on because we haven't checked it yet again, and we haven't turned it off yet. But now, since I'm no longer pressing the button, we're ready to execute the command to turn it off, and now it turns off. One other useful thing you can do with breakpoints is to make them conditional. So if you right-click on one of your breakpoints and you say conditions, you can actually set this. And in this case, it doesn't make too much sense because our program is too simple. But suppose we had some variables. For example, you wanted to check if a given counter is greater than 100 and only stop if that is true. And so now it's indicated like this as a conditional breakpoint, and it's only going to stop at that location if your variable counter is going to be greater than 100. Of course, in this case, we do not have a variable called counter, so this will be a problem. But that's how you would use a conditional breakpoint. And to disable and enable a breakpoint, you just click, left click on it again, and left click again in order to enable it. One more useful view that you can use when you're debugging is the I.O. view right here. So if you click on this, it's going to open up a window that looks something like this, and it has all the possible peripherals that you want to use listed out. And so for us, we're using the parallel input output controller for PIOA because all our pins are on the A port as we programmed before. And I can view this port closely and I can see what's going to happen as these values change. So let me step through this a little bit. I click the button, I end up in here, and you can see that something in here got triggered, something changed. When it turns red, that means that a value has changed. And so when I change the value of this LED by stepping over this command, you can see that a lot of stuff here actually changed. And specifically, if you look at this register right here, it shows us which LED bit 20 was actually changed. And we can delve further into this by double clicking it and seeing that this is the one that's currently on. And in fact, what I can do is I can turn it on and off manually by clicking on this bit and you can see the effect of that on the LED. So we can actually play around with all of our various pins manually from this kind of an interface. We have now seen how to run a program on an actual custom board and how to debug the program using the various tools in Atmel Studio. No matter how complicated your program gets, using breakpoints and stepping through your code is always a great approach.